regarding uh, reference levels, mm -hmm. you know, just because people are asking about, um, of course, they're asking about our calibration toolkit and they're mm -hmm. saying, hey, how come when we set it to zero, it's measuring at 75 dB, not mm -hmm. 85 dB. Yeah. And it was kind of an interesting uh, topic because we recorded at minus 30, mm -hmm. right? And so when you put it to zero, it shows up at 75, right? Yeah. Uh, that's when you do your full calibration. And so, you know, I talked to somebody who actually does calibration for theaters, mm -hmm. commercial theaters. And when I mentioned that, uh, he, this is something he said, and maybe, you know, something we can talk about here mm -hmm. because I don't have the answers. I try to look it up and yeah, um, I thought I knew the answer. But maybe I could be wrong. So it might be interesting. Uh, I've always known that uh, THX specifies eight specifies 85 dB mm -hmm. as the reference level mm -hmm. for the main speakers, right? Yeah. With peaks up to 105. Peaks up to 105, mm -hmm. right? And then what is it? Uh, 10 dB hotter for the LFE for the subs. Right, right. Correct. Okay. So 85 dB is just like, you know, what people mm -hmm. always say. Yeah. Now, what this guy was telling me, the guy who calibrates the theaters, he's like, well, home is actually 75. Uh, I'm not sure. I've heard that. And, you know, I try to look it up also. Yeah. And it seems like it's somewhere in that range, like somewhere mm -hmm. between 85 and 75, because I've seen one where they said Odyssey is calibrated to 81 dB. Mm -hmm. And then some people say it's anywhere from 76 <laughs> to 79, depending on the size of your room. Mm -hmm. So I've seen these different things, but it almost seems like the consensus is that home is not 85. Yeah. And it kind of makes sense because I don't know who did the poll, whether it was you or Aaron, but somebody did a poll about how loud they listen. Was yeah. that you? What, mm -hmm. No, somebody did not, that poll and yet. like nobody said, I listen to Zoom. <laughs> nobody. I, know, I know a handful of people that, that love it. On a regular? That, it's loud, yeah. So here's, and it's, it's always been super confusing to me. My understanding is, let's say you, you've got a, a, a Denon or a Marantz, you run Odyssey. When it runs the test tones, it's, it's measuring at 75 dB because 85 dB doing these test tones is loud to your ears as mm -hmm. you're doing it. Mm -hmm. But my understanding was always that it actually, when it's doing the measure or the actual calculation mm -hmm. and when it's figuring out your trim levels, it actually is measuring those and kind of a level adjusting those to 85. But that's my understanding. Could be wrong. Let us know in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's an interesting right thing, right? It's wrong. But I I'm agreeing with you when it's, when you say like, when it comes to these test tones, and it's just going Shh, yeah. like 85 yeah. with that, you yeah. know, that limited... It's kind, of, uh, kind of annoying. Yeah, it's a lot, you know. Um, because I think 85, or let's just say 85 dB, but if you're doing the full range, meaning you're including the bass, sure. that's, that's uh, you know, maybe yeah. you can handle that a little bit better than sure. 85 dB with just, what, 500 hertz to 2 kilohertz? Yeah. That's, that's a lot of energy. Yeah, it's loud in that so. sensitive region, you know. So that's a it's an interesting topic because mm -hmm. you know I thought we knew that I thought everybody kind of knew like oh it's this and then yeah. looking into it it kind of makes sense that in a larger space you could probably handle eighty five just because you know the different how far you are from the thing. Um, but you would think that eighty five would still be it's all relative because for them to hit eighty five those speakers had to be cranked pretty loud because of the distance that they have to travel. Mm -hmm. And I know certain speakers, they have different um, abilities to travel sound and not drop off as much. Like mm -hmm. JBL, for example, when mm -hmm. you're looking at a line array, mm -hmm. they can travel long distance. That's why they use them in concerts. So yeah. it doesn't drop off you know, drastically when you go to halfway of the auditorium or the um, whatever you want to call it, the, the concert area. So yeah. Yeah, so I'm just look, taking a look here. Some of these folks, I always thought the test were set to 75, but the reference level calibration is still set to the 85 yeah. to 105 plus 10. Yes. Yeah, that's my understanding, Snoots. Um, again, that's just from what I'm seeing online, but I've even said it wrong in my in my videos. I'm like, oh, yeah, 75. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's not 20 dB of headroom. That's 35, 30 dB of headroom, you know, if you're doing 105. Mm -hmm. so. You know, what's also interesting is, 85 if you're talking about 85 db mm -hmm. if you're talking about car audio like that's a hilariously low yeah 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 about right when they're when they're hitting that with like all the <laughs> they're like you know 140 150 like yeah easily in the car you know with a ton of bass so yeah. i think it really depends on uh the frequencies mm -hmm. you know you don't want to you don't want to do 
one kilohertz, you know, at at 150 d- dB is yeah. not good, you know. Uh, so yeah, that's an interesting thing. I think what the important takeaway though for that is that if you're going to be mm-hmm. calibrating, mm-hmm. right, unless you're using something like dynamic EQ, which switches, you know, if you're not going to use that, you're, mm-hmm. I recommend not using it. I don't use it. Then if you calibrate to 75 dB, whatever's comfortable, right? When you yeah. raise it up and down, it should all stay the same. What you're, yeah. what you're mostly yeah, changing fine. is the relative levels, yeah. right? And if you're yeah. using a mic, the microphone does not care whether it's 85, 95, right. you know, one, maybe, a, you know, there's going to be a limit, but it yeah. doesn't care. Your ears care, right? We have the, you know, our ears, the, what we hear or how mm-hmm. we perceive changes based on volume. But nobody's that I know is calibrating like EQ stuff with their ears only. Right. Right? Sure. Levels, you know, basically you can you can set it to a comfortable level is mm-hmm. what I would say. Listen to you know what you normally listen at, and then you know make your minor adjustments there. Mm-hmm. And when you turn it up, if you have to turn it up, turn it down. They're all going to go up and down together. Yeah, I don't, I don't, and I'm with you, Joe. I don't think it necessarily matters whether we're calibrating to 75 or 85 and there's a question here no nothing says is there any reason why we would use 75 or 85 as a reference level why not use your actual listening volume to set all the db matching etc my understanding the kind of the biggest reason why we have a reference point and that's really all it is so zero db on your avr when it's calibrated should be the same in joe's room should be the same in my room should be the same in Chana's room, should be the same in Aaron's room if we're calibrated to reference volume. Um, and using the what I call the um, relative measure or scale, you know, when it's in negative dB and zero dB versus a scale of like zero to a hundred. When you've got a zero to a hundred, that really doesn't tell you anything because 70 on a Pioneer could be totally different volume than 70 on a Onkyo and 70 on. Or how about how know, about 70 with your JTRs and then 70 with like these very yeah. ine- inefficient speakers? Yeah. 70 is not 70, right? Right. So that's why we calibrate it. I, and again, I think it's just so that, that we all, like I tend to listen to music or movies usually about negative 15, sometimes negative 10. So I'm 10 to 15 dB most of the time on average under reference volume, you know, under that 85 to 105 peaks. Um, Cause that's, a, that's pretty loud to me. You know, when it really gets cranking, you're in the nineties, you know, and mm-hmm. you hit up to a hundred and that's, that's loud, you know, for me, but. Let's see here. Um, Somebody says, who's this? Justin says, if you had a high noise floor, mm-hmm. a louder calibration volume might help. And mm-hmm. that is absolutely correct. You know, some people say, oh, so what, what do I need to calibrate at this level? And what I tell people is, listen, you know, is it a noisy environment? Because that's noise. That's that's unwanted noise. Right. So that sorry about that. That's unwanted noise. And the pink noise or whatever sound is coming out of this, you know, that's generated that is the wanted signal right Mm -hmm. you want your signal to be high and you want the noise to be low relative to each other so if your noise is high then you got to turn it up louder right if it's real quiet then you don't have to turn it up so high yeah so signal to noise that's what you want to think about when you're doing calibration right the mic doesn't know the difference Mm -hmm. so you want to give it the signal that you want to give it right yeah not not people talking and people stomping around or AC. So yeah, that's a good question though. Yeah. Yeah. Fencer's got a good one too. He says, do you guys calibrate to just the main listening position or do you try to get good seat to seat having trouble dialing in the other seats with two subs? So I'm going to tell you my selfish answer. <laughs> I mainly just, I, I do my seat. And oh, the biggest yeah. reason is because very few people that actually come over to a demo, my, my setup even care. Like I could turn all the speakers off, but two, and they'd still think it was amazing, you know, because they're like, okay, that's cool. It sounded nice. I felt some bass. They don't know anything about this stuff. They're not enthusiasts. Now, when somebody does come over, like if Joe were to come over to my house to demo, he's getting my seat. I'm just going to sit in, in an off seat. So it's not a big deal. I can I can sit in that primary listening position anytime I want. So I, I calibrate from mine. What some guys will tell you is when you try to 
flatten everybody's frequency response and you start EQing and trying to get a really nice smooth response, it's like when you mess with this one, then you're going to affect this one. And so it, it's really hard. And so sometimes people say, just kind of get in the middle. Don't go too extreme on the primary listening position because it's going to affect this over here. So maybe kind of go like moderate. Don't go extreme on trying to dial that in totally flat for that primary listening position because it's going to impact the other ones. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, what Michael's talking about is, is just like, you know, an average what you're doing is you're giving equal weight. So let's say mm -hmm. if you have a whole row of seats, <clears throat> if you gave each one equal weight, meaning that they're all equally important. Now wait till Chana's ready. I'll wait till you're ready. Um, if you gave them all equal weight, meaning that you assume that all of them mattered the same, mm -hmm. then that means that you have to compromise. Yeah. Right? You have to make compromises to make it sound as good as possible to all of them. As opposed to if you make it really good for one position and mm -hmm. whatever happens to the other ones, mm, I yeah. don't know, then you can really make that one significantly better mm -hmm. than optimizing for all of them. So it's a trade off. Yeah. Sure. And when I do calibrations for people, I say, how many seats do you have? So that's mm -hmm. one. So usually they'll say, ah, I have four, right. I have two, you know, whatever it is. And then I say, or I have a couch, right? They'll say that. Yeah. And then I'll ask, all right, so how many people actually watch here? Like, how many people sit here and watch movies? And they're like, uh, I don't know, maybe like two, right? Them and their significant other. Yeah. And then a lot of times I'll ask, like, who who really cares, though, about mm -hmm. the sound? Like, oh, yeah. that's just me. Yeah, so now, does not. So they have all these seats. What you want to do is kind of just weight it. So maybe don't make it horrible on these seats. Right. But don't compromise so much on that one seat that's really important to people, right? So, uh, you know, you got to just take those things into consideration. And then do you guys calibrate just for MLP? Okay, yeah. Having trouble dialing in other seats with two subs. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Maybe take a look at multi-sub optimizer, MSO. It's a Windows app. It's free. Pretty complicated. So depending on how good you are at uh, calibration, it might be a little bit much, but... <clears throat> usually what you want if you have multiple subs and multiple seats if you're interested in joining us in the after show you can visit patreon.com forward slash daily hi-fi we'd love to hang out with you and get to know you better we're gonna have a lot of fun